So this is my part two video on hybridization. In the first video, we learned the basics of hybridization and I have a link of that video below. But in this video, I wanna go over tricky examples in determining the hybridization of an atom. However, how do you determine the hybridization of an atom? Well, a simple trick I like to use is whenever there's an extra bond, you know it requires a p orbital. For example, what is the hybridization of this carbon? Well, we see it has an extra bond. It has this double bond. So therefore, it has an extra bond. And whenever you have an extra bond, you need a p orbital. So because we have one extra bond, we know we must have one p orbital. So therefore, this carbon must be sp2 hybridization, hybridized. However, what about this carbon? Well, this carbon has two extra bonds. So therefore, this carbon must have two p orbitals. So therefore, it must be sp hybridized. So that's a very simple rule for determining the hybridization of an atom. So now let's try a trick example. What is the hybridization of this nitrogen and this carbon? Well, we see they have an extra bond. They have this double bond, so they have one extra bond. So if they have one extra bond, they must have one p orbital. So therefore, they must be sp2 hybridized because that's the type of hybridization that has one p orbital. So therefore, we know this nitrogen and this carbon are both sp2 hybridized. And they would look like this. This is what this molecule looks like if you were to draw out the electron orbitals. So again, we know this carbon is sp2 hybridized. So therefore, it would look like this. And we know sp2 hybridized atoms have three sp2 hybridized orbitals and one unhybridized p orbital. And we also know carbon has four valence electrons. So we need to split four valence electrons among these orbitals. So therefore, each orbital has an electron. For example, this orbital represents this orbital with an electron. This orbital represents this orbital, and this orbital represents this orbital. And of course, this p orbital would represent this orbital. So that's what's going on with this carbon. It's sp2 hybridized. What about this nitrogen? Well, we know it's also sp2 hybridized, so it would look like this. And again, we learned in the last video that sp2 hybridized atoms have three sp2 hybridized orbitals and one unhybridized p orbital. And we know nitrogen has five valence electrons, so we need to split five valence electrons among these orbitals. So therefore, we know one orbital must have two electrons in order to split five electrons among these orbitals. So this particular sp2 hybridized orbital would represent this orbital, which we know has two electrons. So we see this orbital has two electrons. And that's what's going on in this lone pair of electrons. This lone pair of electrons is just an sp2 hybridized orbital with two electrons, which again represents this guy. So again, that's what's going on in this nitrogen and this carbon. That's what these atoms look like. However, what's going on in these covalent bonds between this carbon hydrogen, this carbon hydrogen, and this nitrogen hydrogen? Well, we learned in the last video that we know hydrogen has s orbitals. So for example, this hydrogen has an s orbital with its electron represented by this orbital. And we know this carbon we already learned has an sp2 hybridized orbital with an electron representing this orbital. And we know whenever we have orbitals overlapping, that's when we form a covalent bond. So that's what's going on in this covalent bond. So whenever you see a compound like this and you see a covalent bond, know that the carbon must have an orbital represented this sp2 hybridized orbital. And we know this hydrogen must also have an orbital represented by this s orbital. And whenever we have orbitals overlapping, that's when you form a covalent bond. So that's what's going on in this covalent bond. And the same thing with this bond and this bond. For example, this nitrogen we know has an sp2 hybridized orbital, and this hydrogen has an s orbital, represented by this s orbital. So we have overlap among these two orbitals, so that forms a covalent bond. However, what's going on in this double bond? Well, this yellow bond is represented by these sp2 hybridized orbitals overlapping. So again, this orbital is represented by this orbital of the nitrogen, well, this orbital is represented by this orbital of the carbon. And we have overlap, so we form a covalent bond. So that's what's going on in this covalent bond. However, what's going on in this second bond? Well, remember, whenever you have an extra bond, there must be p orbitals.
And it's these p orbitals that form the second bond. So again, we know the nitrogen has a p orbital, and we know the carbon has a p orbital. And we know both these p orbitals have electrons. Again, this represents this p orbital, so we see it has an electron. And this represents this p orbital, and we see it has an electron. So whenever we have two p orbitals next each, to each other with electrons, that forms a bond, a pi bond. So that's what's going on in this second bond. It's these p orbitals which overlap, forming a pi bond. So again, these two orbitals essentially form this pi bond. That's what's going on. So that's what's going on in this double bond, and that's what's going on in this compound. So what about this compound? What's the hybridization of this oxygen? Well, we see it has one extra bond, and we see it has a second extra bond. So therefore, we have two extra bonds. So therefore, we must have two p orbitals. So therefore, we know this oxygen must be sp hybridized because that's the only type of hybridization that has two p orbitals. And the exact same thing with this carbon, two extra bonds. So therefore, you must have two p orbitals. So therefore, this carbon must be sp hybridized. So therefore, we know this oxygen and this carbon are both sp hybridized. So let's focus on this carbon. So we already explained how this carbon must be sp hybridized. And we learned in the last video that sp hybridized atoms have two sp hybridized orbitals and two unhybridized p orbitals. For example, this p orbital would represent this p orbital, and this p orbital would represent this p orbital. And again, we know carbon has four valence electrons, so we must split four valence electrons among these orbitals. So therefore, each orbital has an electron. For example, this orbital has an electron, this orbital has an electron, this orbital has an electron, and this orbital has an electron. So that's what's going on with this carbon. So what about this oxygen? Well, again, it's also sp hybridized. So therefore, we know we must have two sp hybridized orbitals, and we must have two unhybridized p orbitals. So we see this oxygen has five valence electrons, so we must split five valence electrons among these orbitals. So therefore we know one orbital must have two electrons. That's the only way to split five among these orbitals. So this particular sp hybridized orbital represents this orbital, which we know has two electrons in it. And that's what's going on in this lone pair of electrons. So again, this lone pair of electrons is just a sp hybridized orbital with two electrons in it. So again, that's what's going on in this oxygen and this carbon. But what is going on in this covalent bond? Well, we know hydrogens have s orbitals. We were, learned that in the last video. So this hydrogen has an s orbital represented by this s orbital. So we know this carbon has an sp hybridized orbital and this hydrogen has an H, an S orbital, so that forms a covalent bond. So that's what's going on in this covalent bond. This carbon has an sp hybridized orbital, the hydrogen has an S orbital, we have overlap, that forms this covalent bond. That's what's going on in this covalent bond. However, what's going on in this triple bond? Well, this dark blue bond is represented by this bond. So again, this oxygen has an sp hybridized orbital, and this carbon has an sp hybridized orbital. So we have orbital overlap, so that forms a covalent bond. So that's what's going on in this covalent bond, where again, this orbital is represented by this orbital, and this orbital is represented by this orbital. So we have overlap, and that's the basis of this first bond. However, we have a triple bond. So what's going on in these other bonds? Well, this top bond is due to these p orbitals overlapping each other. So again, this p orbital is represented by this p orbital for the oxygen, while this p orbital is represented by this p orbital for the carbon. So we have two p orbitals with electrons that can overlap forming a bond. So that's the basis of this light blue bond. However, what about this bond, this green bond? Well, again, it's due to p orbital overlap. So again, this oxygen has a p orbital represented by this p orbital, and this carbon has a p orbital represented by this p orbital. So we have electrons in each of these p orbitals. So we have overlap, and that forms a bond. So that's the basis of this green bond. So that's what's going on in this triple bond. This dark blue bond is due to these sp hybridized orbitals overlapping. The light blue bond is due to these p orbitals, 
and the light green bond is due to these p orbitals. So we form a triple bond. So again, whenever you have an extra bond, you know you must have p orbitals. p orbitals form extra bonds. Also, you may have caught before that I said oxygen has five valence electrons, when in reality, oxygen is supposed to have six valence electrons due to its location in the periodic table. So therefore, because oxygen is supposed to have six valence electrons, but this oxygen actually has five valence electrons, therefore we know it has a formal charge of positive one. So this oxygen would have a positive one charge. So just keep that in mind. So what about this compound? So this is a tricky example. But focusing on this carbon, we know we have one extra bond, which requires the p orbital. And we have another extra bond, which requires a p orbital. So therefore, we have two extra bonds. So therefore, we need two p orbitals. So therefore, this carbon must be sp hybridized, because that's the only type of hybridization with two p orbitals. What about this carbon? Well, we have one extra bond, so therefore we must have one p orbital, so therefore it's sp2 hybridized. The exact same thing with this carbon. This carbon has one extra bond, so therefore it must have one p orbital, so therefore it must be sp2 hybridized because that's the only type of hybridization with one p orbital. So again, this carbon is sp hybridized, while these two carbons are sp2 hybridized. So what's going on with this carbon? Well, again, it's sp hybridized. So therefore, we know it must have two sp hybridized orbitals represented by these two orbitals. And we must have two unhybridized p orbitals, where this p orbital is represented by this p orbital, while this p orbital is represented by this p orbital. And again, we know carbon has four valence electrons, so we must split four valence electrons among these orbitals. So each orbital has an electron. This orbital has an electron, this orbital has an electron, this orbital has an electron, and this orbital has an electron. So that's what's going on with this carbon. It's sp hybridized. What about this carbon? Well, this carbon is sp2 hybridized. So therefore, we have three sp2 hybridized orbitals, and we have one unhybridized p orbital. And again, carbon has four valence electrons, so we must split four valence electrons among these orbitals. So each orbital has an electron, and we can see that. And the same thing with this carbon, the exact same thing. It's, it also is sp2 hybridized, so therefore three sp2 hybridized orbitals and one unhybridized p orbital. So that's what's going on in this compound. And again, we know what's going on with each of these covalent bonds. For example, what's going on with this covalent bond? Well, again, this carbon has an sp2 hybridized orbital represented by this orbital. And we know this hydrogen has an s orbital represented by this orbital. So we have overlap, so that forms a covalent bond. So that's what's going on in this covalent bond. We have overlap among orbitals. However, what's going on here with these two double bonds? Well, again, we know this carbon has this p orbital with an electron represented by this p orbital. And we know this carbon has a p orbital with an electron represented by this p orbital. So therefore, we have two p orbitals next to each other, this p orbital and this p orbital. They both have electrons, so that forms a double bond. So that's what's going on in this light blue bond. However, what about this bond? What's going on in this bond? Well, again, it's the same idea. This carbon has a p orbital represented by this p orbital in purple. And this carbon also has a p orbital represented by this p orbital. So again, Again, this p orbital is this one for this carbon, while this p orbital is this one for this carbon. And both of these orbitals have an electron, so that is the basis of this bond. So that's what's going on in this purple bond. So we see each of these bonds require a p orbital. For this carbon, for this bond, required this p orbital. And for this carbon, this bond required this p orbital. So therefore, two extra bonds requires two p orbitals. And again, the only type of hybridization that has two p orbitals for an atom is sp hybridized. So that's what's going on with these bonds, and that's what's going on with this compound. So what about this carbocation carbon? Well, this is an example you just have to know. So you just have to know that carbocations are sp2 hybridized. So again, this carbon is sp2 hybridized. So therefore, it has three sp2 hybridized orbitals. 
and one unharbordized p orbital. So again, this sp2 harbordized orbitals, this orbital, this orbitals, this orbital, and this orbitals, this orbital. And again, we have a p orbital. But remember, based on where carbon is in the periodic table, carbon's supposed to have four valence electrons. But notice this carbon only has three valence electrons. So therefore, it has a formal charge of positive one. And that's why it's a carbocat ion. So essentially what's going on is each of these sp2 hybridized orbitals have an electron. However, this p orbital is empty without an electron. And that's what's going on with this positive charge. It's essentially an empty p orbital. So that's what's going on with carbocations. That's just something you, you just need to know and just simply memorize. So what about this nitrogen? Is it sp3 hybridized or sp2 hybridized? Well, you may see, does this nitrogen have any extra bonds? And we see it has no extra bonds. So therefore, you may think it has no p orbitals. So therefore, it must be sp3 hybridized because that's the only type of hybridization with no p orbitals because we have no extra bonds. However, in reality, this is actually sp2 hybridized. So what's going on? So let's imagine this as an sp3 hybridized nitrogen. So if this nitrogen was sp3 hybridized, it would look like this, where we have four sp3 hybridized orbitals. However, realize that this nitrogen can go through resonance. We can go through resonance where through these lone pairs of electrons scooch down, forming a double bond. And when we do that, these electrons scooch on the nitrogen. So if we go through that resonance cycle, we'd essentially form this compound, where again, the electrons scooch down, forming a double bond, represented by this double bond. Then these electrons scooch on the nitrogen, forming these lone pairs of electrons. So then we would form this compound. And in this compound, the nitrogen is sp2 hybridized because we see we have an extra bond. So if you have an extra bond, you must have a p orbital. So in this example, this nitrogen is sp2 hybridized. And we can see that we have three sp2 hybridized orbitals and one unharbordized p orbital. So in this resonance structure, the nitrogen is sp3. In this resonance structure, the nitrogen is sp2. So whenever an atom can go through resonance, it, the hybridization is always the hybridization with the smaller number. So therefore, in reality, this nitrogen is sp2 hybridized. So if you have an exam and they show you this compound and ask what's the hybridization of this nitrogen, it's sp2 hybridized because it goes through resonance. And, when it, and you compare the resonance structures and the one with the lower number, is the right answer. So therefore we know this nitrogen is sp2 hybridized. So this is wrong. This does not exist in nature. If you were to magically look at this compound, you would not see this. You would not see a nitrogen that's sp3 hybridized. With an sp3 hybridized orbital with two electrons in it, making this lone pair of electrons, that does not exist. And in reality, because this can go through resonance, and when it goes through resonance, it can be sp2 hybridized. Therefore, this nitrogen in reality is sp2 hybridized. So therefore, the way this nitrogen looks like is really like this. It's sp2 hybridized with three sp2 hybridized orbitals and one unharbordized p orbital. And it's this unharbordized p orbital with these two electrons that make up this lone pair of electrons. So again, in reality, this nitrogen is sp2 hybridized. So again, this concludes my video on ex advanced examples and hybridization. But in my next video, I'm going to go over resonance examples and advanced examples of resonance that really requires you to master hybridization. So after the third video, you should really master hybridization.